Our next uh, speaker is Sven, Sven Spengemann. He's from Germany, he's a lawyer, and he spent six years with United Nations in Iraq and visited Kurdistan several times. He's here to share his perspective with us today. Please welcome him. Dear friends, Rosbash, first and foremost, <laughs> please allow me to thank you for the opportunity to be with you today. It's a great honor for me to be part of the commemoration of the anniversary of al Anfa and Halabja here in Toronto. Um, I would particularly like to thank uh, Satip Kakai of the Greater Toronto Kurdish House uh, for extending the invitation to deliver some brief prepared remarks on this very solemn day as we remember the scores of innocent victims who died 25 years ago. Last year, as in a number of previous years, I participated in the Halabja commemoration in Baghdad at the invitation of Kurdish members of the Iraqi parliament. From 2005 until June last year, I had the privilege of serving the Iraqi people as an official of the United Nations. From 2007 onwards, I was a member of the UN's political team, working on questions of constitutional and legislative reform, including issues that needed to be settled between the government of Iraq and the Kurdistan region government, including management of oil and gas revenues, Article 140, and the future of Kirkuk. Throughout our tenure in Iraq, my colleagues and I worked very closely with leading Kurdish parliamentarians and officials, including Saadi Barzanji, Sami Atrushi, Tanya Jili Khailani, Mohammed Ihsan, Ashti Haurami, Khalid Saleh, and Fuad Masoum. We ran roundtables and conferences in Erbil and Baghdad, and we worked toward reaching a better common understanding of how to approach these challenging and complex issues issues that remain pivotal to the future of the Kurdish nation. In the course of my work in Iraq, I learned about the deep scar that Halabja and al Anfal left in the hearts of the Kurdish people. Nobody who sees the pictures that were taken after the chemical attack will ever forget them. The scores of dead children, women, innocent men, and the distorted faces of those who died in absolute horror and agony as the chemical agent took effect. The genocidal campaign of Saddam Hussein reflects the absolute worst of which humankind is capable. Canada, along with the rest of the world, must never forget what happened in Halabja, and we must not shy away from acknowledging the severity of the crimes committed by this murderous regime. In the fall of 2006, I had an opportunity to spend a day at the Saddam Hussein trial. I saw the dictator I heard him speak, I encountered his gaze as he examined one by one those of us who were assembled in the observation room, and I will never ever forget that day. On December 30th, 2006, Saddam Hussein faced justice under an Iraqi-led process and was executed early in the morning by hanging. It is now up to all of us to continue to ensure that the victims of the Al-Anfal campaign and the Halabja, tra Halabja tragedy will never be forgotten. That in the records of history, the Saddam regime will continue to be held accountable for its genocidal acts, and that such travesties will not happen again. And to honor the victims of Halabja, it is now also up to all of us to work together toward a brighter future for the Kurdish nation, for the people of all of Iraq, for the people of Syria, and for all other peoples affected by the horrors of war and conflict. Once again, I would like to thank you for this opportunity to, with, to be with you today and to remember those who died during the Al-Anfal campaign and in Halabja 25 years ago. May their souls rest in peace. Thank you.